Hello, welcome back to Dumb Thumbs Up PV. So today is an exciting review because of this little guy right here. And I'm sorry about my camera. My camera dropped on its lens, so the lens is kind of freaking out the autofocus. This here is the Emax Tiny Hawk Freestyle Frame, and it's a Truex frame. I'm really excited about this one. Guys, this is a non-monetized channel. I'm not getting paid for this review, I'm not getting kickbacks. I bought this thing from Pyro Drones, just like you would. This is an extension of my hobby. So there's no affiliated links, there's none of that business, okay? It's just my opinion on these things, my expectations versus reality, that's what a review is. And that's it, maybe I'll point out some things that uh, the other reviewers haven't pointed out. But I mean, I'm not just gonna go out and fly this thing stock, I'm, I'm gonna actually modify this. I'm gonna modify the camera, the VTX, the antenna. The battery holders are not here yet, but I'll show a picture about what I'm gonna get or what I'm, I have coming. Um, I'm changing out the props as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a stock review like I normally would. I'm going to take it out of the park, do a proper review on it. And then I'm going to come back, modify it, show you how to modify it or show you how I modified it. And then I'm going to tune it, take it out, fly it again, share the tune with you. All right, guys. And so I'm going to try um, to make this quick as possible. Go. I have a lot to say there here. Um, like first and foremost, this is the unit. It's incredibly small and it's incredibly quiet. In fact, it's so quiet and so stable that I actually flew it around inside the house. Um, as I would fly a whoop, I normally would never fly anything with open props. I have leather furniture and nice stuff and dogs, but I actually flew this around when the wife went to sleep because it was so damn quiet and so damn stable. This is definitely set up for a, for a beginner. That's the way it flies. It's, it's very forgiving. Um, the props themselves, um, they're great for beginners. Uh, they kind of lack power. I think they're a little too aggressive for these motors when you start getting up in the RPMs. I noticed that it, it's kind of flat a little bit. But anyway, I mean, for a beginner, it's it's the way it's set up is not too bad. However, there's some things that are really hacky on this thing. Um, okay, first and foremost, your case is kind of cool. However, you can't use the foam once you put the once you put this uh, the props on, you can't use the foam at all. So that's it on that and it also has a little pocket for the batteries it comes with two batteries it comes with a little battery charger it comes with the instructions it comes with the vtx card um it comes with a couple extra props yada 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 okay so here's here's some of the things that uh really i was surprised by emacs i'm a fan of emacs i've been using the products for four years this vtx antenna comes loose okay it just comes loose there's nothing holding it so it can easily get slammed in the props as soon as you go upside down so as you can see here i took i took the battery strap which is good by the way the battery strap has a really good velcro on it unlike the full speed um, toothpick which is crap and a joke um i turned the buck buckle to the side and i just zip tied the rx antenna so it can't get inside the props um also the rx antenna is just laying out here loose the shiny part which is the radiated part the part you don't want to cut because if you cut it bye bye range and the range on these things aren't very good to begin with so what I did is I took a zip tie, I put it on the top plate here, put it straight up, put the RX antenna, and then put a piece of shrink tube over the top of it. But it also serves as a dual function because, as you can see here, I've threaded the RX antenna between my battery leads and my balance plug here because these will, you know, it's a top mount battery, so they're going to end up in the props as well. And it kind of stops the battery from going all the way forward because even though this is a good little battery strap with plenty of Velcro, it's also a slippery one. It doesn't have the grip like the ones you get free from RDO when you just order the smallest item. They just give you these things. I mean, they must have like a billion of them. But this has got a nice grip on it like you would expect. This is just the slippery one. And there's also not anything on the top plate to keep the battery from sliding as well. So this kind of helps that from happening so you don't end up without... You know a battery it also doesn't come with a beeper and i don't understand that because beepers are small i mean you can get these little beepers like this they're very very small very very lightweight this is made to fly outside and without a beeper on it good luck trying to find it i know some guys are going to say well you guys you know you can use the um the ESCs and stuff to make the motors beep and whatever not well good luck with that you're not you're not going to find it with that it's too quiet so yeah i'm just you know they should have came with a beeper um also here on the bottom, I added two more zip ties to just kind of shorten this up so that the battery loop here wasn't going to end up in the props as well. And I kind of wish they would have done something to more secure your capacitor down. It just kind of hangs there. And these wires are brittle, so I'll be remounting that somewhere else. Let's talk about the mods. So the mods I'm going to be using is a Runcam Racer Nano for the camera. 
uh, TBS Unified Pro 32 Nano for the VTX, and there's my antenna right there. I'm also going to use these props here, and I have a battery holder. I'm going to show you a picture because it's not going to be here in time for this review, but here it was what it looks like. It's just TPU, and they work out really nice. That's what I'm using right here, and I've used it all summer long. It's just a TPU and it holds it very, very nice. And plus I got some pads, some sticky pad here. So that's what I'm gonna do with this. Um, so let's talk, I'm gonna throw up some videos now. So let's talk about the overall performance of this. Well, first of all, I was excited about getting this up and flying. It's extraordinarily quiet. Um, it's very, very stable, like I said. Um, and I flew this around inside the house without a problem, just like you would fly a whoop. But, I decided to fly this thing in a storm. So this is 8.30 at night, 15 mile an hour winds, according to the weather channel, the weather station up by the airport, which is about four miles away from this location, and 24 mile an hour gusts. Normally I would never even fly a three inch in weather like this, but I was very excited to get this out and I wanted to show the performance of the camera and the VTX, not my flying skills, not how well this thing flies itself because you know, Andy RC has already did a great review on this, and so did um, especially Kebab FPV. Kebab FPV really showed how this thing can perform when you have somebody that's good on the sticks. Um, so I flew it anyway. I just wanted to show the camera and the VTX because that's the two things that people are bitching about the most. So first of all, the camera is really good. It's not a great camera. It's not an awful camera, but it's it, it's really not that bad. The the clarity of the camera, the colors are correct. Um, you can see here at 8.30 at night, the building, the lights in the building are already coming on, everything else, uh, street lights are coming on and everything else, and, and I'm also having a storm moving in. So it's complete co cloud cover, as you can see in the video. And yet, there's plenty of light for this, for this camera to work. It was very crisp in my goggles. Um, you have to remember, too, the video you're watching is you know, Fat Shark DVR plus YouTube compression, guys. So, you know, you can't really judge the camera based off of this recording. In my goggles, I was very surprised by that. I would actually keep the camera if I had known it was that good and just change out the lens because I cannot stand this lens. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a 1.6, 1.8, 1 1.4. I don't know what it is. I'm used to 2.1, period. So I'm not used to this fish bowl, fish eye. Ugh, I couldn't stand it. So that's one thing I did not like about the camera. Everything else about the camera I thought performed extraordinarily well. Um, the VTX is horrible. As you can see, I'm just, just 70 feet away between, or not even 70 feet, about 60 feet. Yeah, it might be 70 feet away from me. And if, as soon as I get a tree between me and the quadcopter, it just pff, done. The most, the farthest I've been away from the quadcopter was probably maybe 200 feet. And you can see it just drops out everywhere. So the VTX is crap, as we all know, and that's why I'm going to change it out. Um, so I'm trying to think of anything else on this thing that um, I think that pretty much covers everything. I honestly, if I could change out the lens, I would keep the camera, um, definitely change out the VTX. And the RX performance wasn't bad. I mean, I'm running my FR Sky um, X Lite and it has range issues as it is for whatever reason. I don't know if the internal, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if the transmitter is going bad or what, but it's, it has problems with all my quads. So it didn't have a problem with this. I wasn't getting any alarms or nothing like that. But as far as flight performance goes, even with trying to keep it in 15 mile an hour winds with 24 mile an hour gusts or up to 24 mile an hour, I was still getting, you know, granted I wasn't doing anything, but you know, I was getting four minutes, four and a half minutes, five and a half minutes off a 350 pack. And if you think about a beginner, okay, if you think about a beginner, not, not one of us guys that know how to fly, but a beginner, that's a, that's a lot of flight time because they're not going to be gunning it. They're going to be hovering around, trying to learn the sticks and trying to learn what it does. Maybe do a roll here, a snap roll here, you know, and whatever not. Or maybe even a power loop, you know. So, honestly, a beginner probably would get five minutes and five and a half minutes of flight out of this thing on a 350 pack. So, anyway, guys, there you go on that. So, I'm going to go ahead and take this thing apart and uh, do the mods.